two weeks in Parshat Vayichi and Parshat Shmot, we spoke about the challenges of Mitzrayim, the ability to create a name, and the ability to know that if your name is strong enough, you're able to overcome the most difficult situations in life. But as we enter into Parashat Vayera, Parashat Bo, Parashat Bishalach, Parashat that deal with us leaving Mitzrayim. And if we think about the Jewish year, we'll see that the Seder makes sense. It makes sense that we have a night to commemorate leaving Mitzrayim. But when someone tells you, why are you wearing tzitzit? Zechel Yitziat Mitzrayim. Sounds nice, but what does that mean? What does it mean that your tzitzit are zechel yitziat mitzrayim? And they say your tefillin, your mezuzah. There's so many things that we do zechel yitziat mitzrayim. So what does yitziat mitzrayim really mean? And what I want to try and do this week in two different ideas in the Sfat Emet is try and see what is yitziat mitzrayim supposed to teach us every single day. And so the first idea the Sfatima brings in from his grandfather, and he says, We have to try and understand how much depth there is in this one sentence. The Sfat Emet says, we all think that God created one thing. We all think God created the world. But we see that there are two times that God himself creates something new in the world. If we look from the first until the sixth day of creation, there is no man until the last moment. The beginning of the creation of the world is like the Raham Chal says, Teva Hatov Lehitiv. Why did God create the world? Because He wanted to do good. And God is the essential good. But the incredible chidush the Sfat Emet brings from his grandfather is that God creates not one world, but two worlds. There's the physical world that God creates in Breshit, and there's a nation that God creates in Mitzrayim. And when God creates the nation in Mitzrayim, it's not, we're not participants. It doesn't come because we did so many great things, so true, we davened a little bit. True, we did one or two mitzvot. But if you looked at a Jew, the Jew looked like an Egyptian. We were mamish inside of Ubar Betoch Me'e We were solely connected to Mitzrayim. And God decides, I'm going to make a nation. I'm going to create people, not only a world. And that's a huge chidush. And where does he get the chidush from? How does God create the world? Through ten saints. 
Ten times it says, Vayomer Elohim, Vayomer Elohim Iji Or, Vayomer Elohim Nase Adam Betzameinu Kibmuteinu. Ten times it says, Vayomer. So says the grandfather of the Sfatimet, so why are there Eser Makot? There should have been one. Because the Eser Makot are equivalent to creation. Because God did not create only a world, but He created people to perfect the world. And so this is one idea that connects between Yitziat Mitzrayim and Briat HaOlam. One idea that's saying that why is it so important to remember Yitziat Mitzrayim? Because Yitziat Mitzrayim is the biggest understanding that God says, I created a world that has a nation to bring that world to be a perfected world. I did not create a perfected world. I let it be in the hands of people that they should decide. Should the world be this way? Should the world be that way? And it's not up to always the nature of that God created. It's up to the way that you live. It's up to the way that you decide to look at every aspect of life. The second idea that Sfat Emet says is the first pasuk of Parashat Ba'era is a very difficult one. The first pasuk says, Ve'yidaber Elohim El Moshe. We know that the name Elohim is a deen, a harsh way of God relating to the world, a strict way are relating to the world. So obviously all the Parshanim, the Rash, Rashi, the Ramban, they're going to ask, why is God saying, Vayom Vayidaber Elohim? So they say, what just happened a moment ago? Moshe said, Lama Hareota Laamazeh. So God gets angry. Vayidaber Elohim El Moshe. What do you mean, Lama Reot Alamaz? I told you. Why are you yelling at me? Why don't you understand? But one moment later it says, Vayomer Elav Ani Hashem. And we know that the shame of UK Babke is Rachami. We see the same exact thing in Briat HaOlam. So says the Sfat Emet, Asher Alken, כמו שמצינו בראשית הבריאה, עליו במחשבה לפניו לברותו במידת הדין. וראה שאינו מתקיים, חזר ושיתף עמו מידת הרחמים. Says Rashi, according to Chazal, the Breshi Perak Aleph only has the Shem Elohim. Because that was the ideal idea, understanding. The world should be in Deen. And in Breshit Barak Bet, it says Hashem Elohim. Then he brings in the Midah of Rachel. But here is such an incredible idea that the Sfat Emet understands from the Midrash in Vayikra. If in the creation of the world, what switched the Midah of Din to the Midah of Rachamim? God's perspective. God said, it can't just be Deen. There has to be Rachamim. So says the Sfat Emet, what happened in between the first part of the Pasuk and the second part? Why did Elohim change in Tashem? Says Midrash Beikar Abba, Shira'a HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Shemoshe Hashem realizes that the same perspective he had when God created the world was the same perspective Moshe had when Hashem was starting to create a nation. He didn't look at the world like we're in Breshit, Hashem looks at the world. It says that Moshe looked at Am Yisrael. And because he looked at Am Yisrael, he yelled to God and he said, Ribono shel olam, lama hareota la'am Because Moshe was saying, 
I want a nation to be created. And in that moment, Hashem switches Midat Hadin to Midat Harachim. So we saw from two places in the Sfat Emet, from the Asaram Amarot of the creation of the world, and the Asaram Akot of Yitziat Mitzrayim. And we saw from the switch on Parat Aleph and Breshi to Parat Bet and Breshi, that it switched from Elohim to Hashem, also here it switches from Elohim to Hashem. But what does it mean? It means that Hashem is saying that there's a difference between the way God creates and the way people create. God creates in a way that there is no question of where to go, what to do. God knows it all. So from God's perspective, the world should be ma'amar echa. Why are there asara ma'amarot? Because the asara ma'amarot are saying, God created a world so that people could realize what they could change. And I think the one place I learned this in the deepest level for myself was with my wife, Tanya is that for me, before I met my Eshet Chayel, I thought that the way we create is everything works out perfectly. Is that from the first moment, you never ever disagree, you never have challenges, you never don't want to do the same thing like the other one. It's all, we're just one person, one goal. And Baruch Hashem Hashem introduced me to the most amazing person in the world who has taught me that the true Ahava is only built through Asara Ma'amarot or Asara Makot. It's that the ability of man to create is through consistency. Is the ability of man to create is not that what God creates, it's in one moment. God just says a word, it's there. He says a word, it's there. But if you look at the Makot, it's everywhere. It's, it's in every realm of reality. It's in the sky, it's in the sea, it's in the houses, it's outside the houses, it's in the sheep, it's in the animals. It's everywhere. And it's saying, if you want to know what God is really creating in Yitziat Mitzrayim, is that God is creating people that only can build if they continue every single day with every single ability and in every single possible way in their personality to do it all the time, to try your hardest, to know that it's not something that happens fast. And I want to just finish the shiur with one sentence from Riverskin. And he said to me that many people speak about quality time with their children. And quality time means that if I get home from seven at work, quality time is from seven o'clock till eight o'clock. Reverskin says, it's not qu the quality, it's that the quantity is the quality. It's not that you put one hour, it's that you put as much time and every moment you have into the things that you care about. And that is quality. And that's why the Asara Makot are teaching us what truly is the building of the nation. The ability to know that if I care for something, I don't just do it once or twice. I continually do it every day. So we should have a bracha in our personal homes, in our personal lives, to know the things we care about, but to know that what God showed us is when we care about something, if we want to create it, if we want to create a relationship with our spouses, with our children, with the Torah, with our tefillah, it could only happen if we do it all the time, with all our abilities. Shabbat Shalom.